A dynamite duel on the other side when we talk about LSU Jamie Brandon has become a dominant player big country certainly the key guy but we look right here Brandon look at Brandon 19.5 the reason he's excited he's playing now the small forward position where he's a finalizer as opposed to the point guard slot this is of course an LSU team that thought they would have perhaps the best young backcourt in America with Randy Livingston and Ronnie Henderson you see Brandon now but Livingston, it was just announced this week, will be a medical red shirt for the entire year. That means Henderson will be joined in the backcourt by Brandon Titus, who is in subbing for Andre Owens, who is not playing because of academics. He'll be eligible in January. Now, there you see the starters on the floor for this game. Sutton happens to be Eddie Sutton's son. That's Scott Sutton, and Eddie also has Sean Sutton, the former Kentucky and Oklahoma State player, on his sideline as an assistant coach. So it is all in the family in Stillwater. LSU, a new look this year, going to a motion game offensively. Henderson, he has outstanding touch, one of the most celebrated guards in the country out of Murrah High School in Jackson, Mississippi. Played with Othella Harrington. This is his first start as a collegian. Reeves, strong off the back iron, last touched by the Tigers, so Oklahoma State will control. Henderson had an exam this morning, a speech exam. He wasn't here with the club in terms of the workout, came in later. There is the perimeter jumper for Randy Rutherford, the junior from Broken Bow, Oklahoma, to tie the game at two. He's been a little up and down. Last year was a solid combination. He and Thompson really played well together in that back court. They're running a motion game, pass and go away, something new. Strange seeing them without a post player since 89. They've always had that seven-footer. Shaquille O'Neal, Stanley Roberts, Kirk Hammett. Titus, are you make an interesting point about big country in our open, talking about him being the most improved player. He could have made a case that Gert Hamick was that most improved big player last year. Last year, but in 15 years, I've never seen a player improve as much as big country. Brandon with the long rebound. Brandon, good athlete, played at King High School in Chicago. Nice baseline drive by Titus. Reeves gets in the way again, though. Thompson handles the ball really well. Hurley, big country to follow, but it won't go down. Tigers trying to push it, have Oklahoma State pet play at a faster pace. Quickness against power on the inside. Lanier Burns playing that center position at 6-6. Six, six. Try and take good country away from the basket. Try to isolate Brandon, a little one-on-one -on -one maneuver. Oh, great spin. Oh, and Burns follows. Boy, that was right out of Martin Luther King, that spin move from Chicago when Brandon was so highly celebrated. He was a great player there. That program's had so many superstars, including Rashad Griffith, who you saw in that first game with Wisconsin. Jamie Brand is going to get a little isolation, a little spin move, a little 180. There he is hanging in the air. Big Country rotates over to give some help, and that help really bothered the good look at the basket for Brandon. Titus working on Thompson. Sean Gibson is a player that can step up, particularly on the defensive end, very quick athlete. He played with Andre Owens at Hiawassee Junior College. Out of Tennessee, versatile player. Reeves brings it down as Lanier Burns can't connect. Burns got that 15-foot jump shot. He's got middle range. See, I've got to get the ball inside to Reeves. Total mismatch down in the box. They've got to try to get the ball to him. There's the high lob, and it doesn't work. Now, at the end of the LSU bench, you'll see four players wearing suits. And you can make a great case that this is an outstanding team. That's Misha Mutovic, the young man from uh, Belgrade, Yugoslavia. Andre Owens next to him, Randy Livingston next to him. And over to the far left is Alonzo Johnson, a Tennessee transfer that's seven feet, all waiting in the wings for Dale Brown next year. They're excited with Mutovic. He's from out of Wagner's transfer at 31 last year against Tulane, about 6'10". I think he's got a great future out of Belgrade. Titus, too strong, Brandon. At 6'4", can Sky. 
Nice pass. Good look inside. Gibson to Brandon. Counted in a foul. That's a great power move right there by Brandon. What he really did exceptionally well, Tim, was square his body to get the good baseline look at the glass. Watch the look inside. There's Gibson. He dumps it down inside. Now watch how he squares his body. So he brings his body back. Look, he gets the good look at the glass by bringing his body. For all you young kids out there, you want to square your shoulders to the baseline. He found himself last year at the end of the year when he was put into the wing position as opposed to that point guard slot where he really struggled. Dale Brown in his 22nd year is 17-2 and two when playing in New Orleans, both at the Superdome and here at the lakefront. In fact, the last time they played here, they beat Billy Tubbs' Oklahoma team, and they were ranked number one at that time. There's the dump down to Reeves. They're doing a great job from keeping Reeves getting that good angle once he catches the ball down inside. Seven-point lead for the Tigers. Tigers are a slashing, driving team. Not really a strong perimeter shooting team. They want to go to the basket. Playing against man-to-man -man defense, Oklahoma State. Pressure in the basketball. Gibson could get a five-second call. Remember, you have to put it on the floor in order to hold on to it for longer than five seconds. Yet a count takes place if you just hold the basketball. If you bounce it, you can dribble it for the... You can dribble it for uh, expiring the uh, shot clock. Four minutes gone. Little stack move. Try to run that post maneuver down to the box. Little horizontal cuts for Reeves. Deontay Roberts is coming to the game for the first time. Now that's his spot. That He's is Thompson's man. spot. He has a very quick release with that left hand, a la Gail Goodrich. I watched him shoot the basketball in practice, and I'll tell you, I was really impressed. The guy really has great work ethic, and he's such a fierce competitor. Transfer from out of Texas A&M. He left after the problems for Kermit Davis before Tony Baroni got to Texas A&M. Tony Baroni doing a heck of a job. Beats UNLV the other day. Nice lob for Burns. Good move on a reversal, but they'll say it's a charge. Player control foul against Lanier Burns, his first. Dale Brown unhappy with the call. Dale Brown unhappy with Tom Eads making that call on that baseline. Things going the motivator's way early, though. 9-5 LSU. Tim, we're going to watch the pass by Gibson over to Burns and then that drive and that controversial call where Dale Brown really upset. We say Gibson with the rock right here. He's going to now make the pass to Burns. There's the perm right here. Now he drives, freeze it right here. See, right here is the offensive player, and he's going to step into the defensive player. The defensive player is entitled to that position, and right now there's the principle of verticality. He comes back into the defensive player, foul on the offense, excellent call by Tommy. Dale Brown flanked by Johnny Jones and Clarence Caesar who will be coming in shortly in another turnover resulting from a fine defensive play from the freshman Ronnie Henderson. Oklahoma State seems a step slow for Eddie Sutton here early. Well, you know, they've played a lot of games. Eddie Sutton really upset with the fact that they haven't had a lot of practice time. He said we've been playing so many games. He misses that two weeks of practice. Henderson a duck under, and he took steps. He misses that two weeks of practice with the pushing back of the date to November 1st. You know, he's a teacher. He likes to be in a gym and work. And Eddie Sutton's a fine defensive coach. Been a winner everywhere he's been. He doesn't just teach, go out and be aggressive. He, the fundamentals of defense without picking up fouls. That's the essence of his defensive scheme and terminology. Well, he learned from the best, certainly playing for the late Henry Iba. Again, LSU trying to push the pace with more pressure defensively. They got to really match up on Thompson. Reeves. And there's the follow that won't fall. Reeves has not had a good shot yet, Tim. Every shot he is getting is really a tough shot. Has not had a simple good look at the basket. Now let's do with a couple of quick releases on the offensive end. This guy here is dangerous. If he starts knocking down the three, it'll stretch the defense and make Reeves even that much more effective down inside. I haven't really called Burley's name much, and you figure he could get free. 
Reeves finally gets the roll. But when you, you give help, as you do, to Bryant Reeves, that should leave Burley open on the other block. Yeah, Burley should be effective down on the offside. Reeves has the good set of hands and an excellent touch in the post position. LSU leading by two. They have led by as many as seven early on. What a different look looking at this LSU team. You don't see the power inside, the size, the strength. Uh, he's got to shoot that open shot. So they're playing him to drive. They don't respect his perimeter shot, Jamie Brandon. They're playing him for the drive, so they know he wants to go to the goal with it. Still, he's able to finish. You know, that's amazing. Elgin Baylor was the greatest at that I've ever seen in my life years ago. Before your time, John Saunders. <laughs> I mean, Elgin was unbelievable. You'd play off him and it'd still get 50 on you. There's the high lob to Reeves. Oh, nice, nice long. And it's Burley. It's Burley after giving help to Reeves. He finds it. Yeah, great look by Reeves. Unselfish play. Good two-man inside play. Too much dribbling right now. You want to get a little bit more ball movement and player movement. There's a rejection by Reeves. Not a great shot blocker. Knocked away by Tadis as Sutton was trying to run the break. And Clarence Caesar will come into the game for the first time. Now, he's usually a starter out of Iowa and Louisiana. They expect big things from him. And number one Arkansas in a breeze tonight. Kansas also looks like with, with an easy one. Cincinnati really impressed with their freshman, D'Antonio Wingfield. What a power player he is as a diaper dandy. There's the help from Caesar, the double team of Reeves. See, what they're trying to do is play behind him and then force him to the middle where they get help. There's the double up from the backside. And Tylus comes down with it. And Lanier Burns and Big Country are getting with it a bit. A little elbowing going on down there. Titus is a driving, slashing player, not a prototype, typical point guard. He's a driver. See, there it is. He's looking for the medium-range jump shot. They'll wave it off over the back. Andre Owens is a key to this team. He will be eligible at the McNeese stand. Reeves trying to post inside. Now look at him right here, the big fella. Look at Big Country. He says, give me the rock. Get it to me down low. Look at him right inside. He wants to sit in the box. He gets it. There's the turnaround jumper. They come from the backside. Doesn't really get that good look to use the glass. Doesn't have the good angle. You really couldn't ask for a better player to come over from the weak side, though, than Caesar with his arm span. They could get some turnover. Caesar lost the starting job because of one simple reason, shot selection. Reeves, that's an easy one. See, he gets the angle, able to use the glass. Once he gets that 45-degree angle down in the box inside, he's so effective with that touch on the glass. Glover Jackson, the junior college pivot from Pensacola, is coming to the game, number 33 in white. He's giving up a lot of tonnage to Reeves. Just over 200 pounds at 6'10". He has the ball now. He was a sixth man on a junior college team that won the National Junior College Championship. Right here, Mr. Jackson. Oh, Reeves says, get it out of here. Pensacola Junior College out of Pensacola, Florida. Three blocks for big country. Thompson makes it look easy. He can play at the next level because he's got the great range. He handles the ball really well, and he's an excellent competitive person. LSU has been outscored 11 to 4 in the last three minutes, and Oklahoma State in the midst of a 6 0 spur. Caesar drives baseline. Follows his own shot and knocks it home. He told me I'm not concerned about not starting. That's coach's decision. I want to be on the floor when the game is on the line. Tied at 13. He was second and third the last two years mm. in the SEC in steel. Anticipates really well, but has a tendency to gamble a little bit too much defensively. So that was Caesar gambling right there, rotating over. I think they got Jackson with the push prior to Caesar coming over. 11-14 remaining in the opening half. LSU and Oklahoma State tied with a Baker's dozen. We're tied in New Orleans, and a couple of days ago, Dale Brown made a controversial statement prompted by an arrest of a couple of football players. He talked of role models, and he got himself into a bit of a jam. I was trying to give an analogy. America, wake up. We're wondering why there's all the crime. How about all the incest in the homes? How about all the child molesters? How about all the people that lie and cheat and steal things and then wonder why their children do it? So I was saying, and, and I was using my own profession and myself, that we need to be better role models. You know, you look at Dale Brown, and again, that was prompted 
by what happened with the, within the football program. He has since apologized for making the, but you asked him a question. He's going to give you an answer, and coaches are not always politically correct. Bob Knight has gone through that at Indiana. Well, you know, Bobby gets suspended in that game as we watch the deflection right here. You talk about Bob Knight, a perfectionist, always seeking the perfect game when it comes to the art of basketball and sometimes gets frustrated on poor play, but really no excuse for physical uh, abuse. Uh, there's no one, though, that's tougher on himself after one of his explosions than Bobby Knight. Thompson works free on the wing, and they'll have to solve him defensively. They got to really match up on him. He can flat out shoot the rock, especially if he squares his body. He almost, every time he shoots it, you almost feel it's going in. He's got that kind of release. Henderson, now there's another pure shooter. That's a three-pointer. He had five of them in a 20-point win against Texas, which when you look at what Tommy Penders' team has done since was a quality win for LSU. And then he really struggled, Henderson, against Nichols State in that overtime win. He was 0 for 7 from three-point ring. Brandon gets caught with that reach against Scott Pierce. Don't forget NFL football. It begins with game day. Chris Berman and the game tomorrow at noon Eastern time. NFL primetime will follow at seven. Then the Packers taking on the Chargers. Key NFL matchup involving the Packers who are trying to make their way into the playoffs against the Chargers team that has suddenly become more offensive in recent outings for head coach Bobby Ross. Sutton, the iron unkind to Sutton. He's a transfer from out of Transylvania. Titus, not a good idea that time. Out See? of bounds, it'll be controlled to LSU. Andre Owens is going to take over that point guard slot when he comes back, and he really will give him some stability at that point guard position. Randy Rutherford has come back into the game. Scott Sutton taking a seat. And Clarence Caesar will trigger it in as you look at Rutherford. Scott Sutton, six for 10, up into that shot from three-point range. I love the way they get into the defensive stance. Oklahoma State really been well drilled on the defensive end. And Eddie Sutton is very unhappy, though, with their defensive performances, especially against Arizona. Anderson off the pick from Titus, too strong, and burns skies. Now, there's an example of 6'6", but maybe quicker to the ball. Well, he's very active, and he's got good quickness when he sees the angle to get to the basket. Caesar's hands get in the way. That arm span we talked of. Titus, again, too much dribbling, and Terry Collins takes it away. Boy, Pierce with a moving pick over Brandon, and it'll go the other way. Out of control right there by Thompson. Gerald Boudreaux spotted that one right away. <laughs> Lanier Burns now steps right in on country. Beats him with quickness. Comes right in with the tip. No one blocked him out. See, a quick athlete at 6'6 will give some problems to Mr. Reeves. However, he's going to give him loads of problems down on the other side. Our officials tonight, Gerald Boudreaux, Andre Patillo, and Tom Eves. And they spot yet another turnover. You know, you see a lot of this in early games, Dick. I, I sometimes feel that the lack of practice time, and I think Coach Brown and Coach Sutton would agree, has made for some sloppy play in the early going in college basketball well, you this know, year. You start November 1st, what people don't realize, they said they did it for academic reasons. October 15th, the kids are running conditioning programs, then they're practicing on their own. They probably put more time in an unstructured situation than what they would do in a structured environment. Rutherford runs off a pick. Out of bounds, control to LSU. Rutherford really up and down thus far this year with his shooting, shooting 40%. He's a better shooter than that, and they need his scoring. He's been up and down as a scorer as well. Nine minutes left in the first half. LSU's lead is three over number 15, Oklahoma State. Tim Brando, Dick Vitale here at the Lakefront Arena in New Orleans. Happy to have you with us. Brandon Titus took steps again. See, he's playing out of control right now, but Dale Brown doesn't have many answers on that bench with Randy Livingston out with that knee problem and also the problem of Andre Owens out academically. Cliff Rogier had a big game inside today. A lot of those LSU turnovers, unforced errors. Burley at the top. Fred Burley, senior from Oklahoma City, Douglas High School, and Seminole Junior College. I call him Curly. He always laughs. Curly Burley. Titus from the wing. Way too strong. 
And now it's Burley solo. And he loses the dribble. Got to give it up and get it back. Henderson. Rejected on the other end by Rutherford. Nice play. Boy, he nice and Thomas. Pass. Burns, yes, and a foul. Great look by Henderson after he attracts the double team. Bureau High School played for Osborne, Jordan, Othella Harrington School. Also, James Robinson, Hollywood Robinson, Alabama came from there, and Lindsey Hunter. Now, here's Henderson. There's the double up. They reject him. Now he picks up the loose ball. Now he's going to get doubled on the baseline. There's the double. This is going to be some help. He gets it over to Lanier Burns. Country comes over a little late. Burns says, I like it. And they're going to wave it off because Gibson got in the lane. Oh, my. Well, we've seen a number of breakdowns here by Titus. Actually, that was Brandon Titus that got into the lane. Watch this from Titus coming out of your screen, into your screen. Right there. Yeah, you can't cross that plane coming in from the backside. Country gives it up to Collins. Again, the Tigers just a little quicker to the ball down low. Caesar likes that wing jumper on that block. He can knock down that baseline jumper. Very streaky shooter. Question with Caesar is shot selection. There's the dump down to Gibson. Very athletic down there. Sean Gibson, two position player, can play the small forward as well as the big guard out of Hiawassee Junior College in Tennessee. Burley. I got a solid program down there. Again, they're just rolling the ball faster than Oklahoma State. Henderson looked for the behind-the-back pass to Caesar. He wasn't prepared for it. Hasn't always been pretty for either team, but Eddie Sutton really dislikes it more. 22-17. We're going to watch Gibson get free. A double team comes his way, and Caesar's going to give him the rock. See, there's the double up. Freeze it. Now, right here, see, Country's coming over defensively, but he's going to beat him with quickness to the baseline. After the double up, there goes Gibson, protects the ball, and the reverse layup. By using the reverse, he utilizes the basket to protect himself, and he gets himself the layup. Gibson takes a seat on the LSU sidelines, and you look at the numbers in the paint, and again, Reeves shut down two of seven from the floor. So right now, Brown's defensive scheme in the paint area has been effective. Yeah, they've really done an excellent job. The game plan is to play behind Reeves with a post player and then to bring help over and force him to where they give help. They wanted to kick the ball out of his hands or get a bad look at the basket, and he's been getting a bad look at the goal. Brooks Thompson moves now to the point with Rutherford in the game. Reeves on the blocks. That was a better look right there, and also with Thompson on the same side with Reeves. If you rotate down and give help with Thompson's man, he's wide open for that jump shot. LSU by three, 22 to 19. They scored a lot on the paint. We saw 16 points to four for LSU because of this driving and slashing moves. A little air ball right there. Rutherford on a run out. Nobody rotates back. Poor job defensively. You don't, they don't have any balance, so they get themselves a layup. Rutherford in transition. When they lose Sean Gibson. They lose a lot of their defensive balance. And he'll get back into the game shortly. Got to communicate. After a shot, someone's got to rotate back and protect the goal. A good spacing right now by LSU. Henderson, another air ball. This time it's too strong. Last two shots. There's Good a steal shot. by Henderson. He strips him right here. Oh! Might have got away with a little walk right there. But they looked at him and said, well, maybe he's a future NBA or we'll let him get away with it. I thought he took an extra step. What did you think, Timmy? Yeah, I did too. Yes, sir. I thought a little traveling music, a little disco time. Just after the steal. Right. Thompson on the wing. Off the back iron. Again, Titus quick to the ball on the long rebound. Boy, he had, he had Jamie Brandon on his wing and didn't give it up. Really not comfortable with the ball in his hands. Not a true point guard. Very frustrating to a player like Brandon when he knows he's in position and doesn't get it on the break. So well coached. Oklahoma State getting good ball movement. Eddie Sutton teaches ball movement, player movement. Excellent team defense. Hey, it's no shock why he's had such success now in his fourth year at Oklahoma State, his alma mater. And what a job, 78, Final Four with Arkansas. 
86. Dale Brown goes to the Final Four after losing three times to Kentucky at Eddie Sutton's club, 32 and four, beats them. And what a job. You told me today they beat the number one, two, and three seed. Yeah, they were the 11th seed. That's the highest seed to ever make it to a Final Four. Eddie Sutton locked up with Dale Brown after the U.S. Reed's 60-footer in the 81 regionals down here at the Superdome. They've had a number of classic matchups, though Oklahoma State and LSU are meeting for the first time. Dale Brown and Eddie Sutton know a great deal about one another. Well, they go back a long way to when Dale Brown was at Utah State and Eddie Sutton was at Southern Idaho. Over the back as Brandon was in position again. Foul will be given to Keontae Roberts. Look at Big Country. They're trying to bump up on him right there. The guy bounces right off Big Country. Gans, Oklahoma, 300 people. They got a convenience store. They got a post office. And that's about it. But they got Big Country. His dad and his mom driving nine and a half hours. Dad got out of work today at 2 in the morning at a whirlpool and driving down for the game. They weren't here about a half hour ago. They are here tonight. And, uh, you know, he would have been on the cover of uh, Sports Illustrated had it not been for Boston College's upset of Notre Dame. There was a nice spread on him. And that particular issue and another steal for Oklahoma State. Reverse the ball. That's what you want to reverse it and dump it down. Ian Phillip is in the game for the first time, trying to keep it alive. Gibson finally hauls it down for LSU. Country's going to all jump shots. He's got to put the ball to the deck and use his size and strength to go to the goal. There's Caesar. Caesar to the rescue. CC, CC. Little trifecta. LSU by six. Maybe he learned his lesson. He didn't like sitting on a pine. Sutton, not there. Brandon with numbers. Give Three on two. Draws the foul, but he had the trailer, Lanier Burns. They got three on two. You got to get the ball up back to the middle and then fill the lane and get it back on the wing. Scott Sutton picked up the See, foul. right now, he's got to get the ball back. He's going to drive to the goal. He does draw the contact on Sutton. He's got trailers. All he's got to do is dish it back. Burns had himself a layup. Sutton takes a seat. You know, they're awfully proud, the Sutton family, of what they've been able to achieve. Sean Sutton, a masterful point guard that really perhaps keyed the best Oklahoma State team since the 40s. I mean, that Oklahoma State team that was 20-0 and, and lost in the regionals to Michigan. There you see Sean and John Pelfrey, another Kentucky star to the right. Paul Graham all the way to the left. Outstanding coach as well. Eddie Sutton sent three assistant coaches onto a major college jobs. Tim Jankovich is at North Texas State. He has, for example, Rob Evans down in Mississippi. And Bill Self is the coach at Oral Roberts. LSU's lead is up to eight here in New Orleans. Uh, John, a team that everyone is watching in the Big Ten to perhaps make a bit of a difference. Lou Henson with Deion Thomas uh, can make some noise. Well, you know, Deion Thomas, one of the five, I think, best seniors in the senior class for the NBA draft. Shows you how thin that senior class is. You have Grant Hill was brilliant today against Michigan. Eric Montross, Aaron McKee down at Temple. You throw in Deion Thomas and Carlos Rogers from Tennessee State. That's why I think a lot of underclassmen will probably come out in the NBA draft and continue that trend of the past. Now he's got a spinning noise. See, they try to come down and take away the middle from him. Did you notice how they rotated down you on bet. Country Reeves? Caesar coming from the weak side. And Caesar rotated down and he couldn't spin into the lane. Thompson with a shot clock at two. Well, that's just a nice offensive play that LSU had to give up. They really rotated well. The basketball reversed it. I think you got to play head to head on Thompson. You can't give help off him at all, Tom. Henderson, a runner, too strong. He has to learn shot selection, but freshman will have that problem. In high school, you can get away with that. Rutherford to Burley. Curley, let's go, my guy. Curley, they call an offensive foul. Lanier Burns in position. Look at Curley. Look at Curley talking to the official. Official <laughs> smiling. Curley, come on. Curley Burley. Eddie Sutton says, count it. Hey, Eddie had an unbelievable summer. Did you hear what happened to him with a grizzly beer? Unbelievable. There's the dump down. Look at Curley going to the goal. Burley, charge. Tell you, him about the just, beer. Wait a minute. You just managed to get a grizzly, a curly, and a burly in the same <laughs> sentence. Tell him about the grizzly beer. He's fishing, and all That's, of a sudden, Alaska, I couldn't believe this. He told me the story. I mean, this was serious. Came after him. I guess it was an unbelievably sized bear. 
and he had just caught some salmon. Lucky he dropped the salmon, the bear grabbed the salmon, and he was able to get away. Jamie Brandon knocks home the J on the baseline, and it's 33 to 26. You heard that story. Yeah, oh yeah. Scary. Reeves. Can't get a ball that deep. Once he gets it in deep in that three second area, he's got that nice little turnaround J. Five point lead for LSU. Oklahoma State led briefly, but they have still not gotten on track from an offensive standpoint in this ball game. LSU does a good job slashing and cutting. Dale Brown trying to take advantage of the kind of players he has. They want to penetrate, they want to drive. Brandon loves to drive, especially on that baseline spin. Shot clock is once again under 10, down to five, Dick, and Brandon finishes in the paint. That's a big time finalizer now. He's in a comfort zone, Tim. He really loves the wing. He loves playing there, getting the ball, not making decisions out at the point. Brandon is four for six from the floor here in the first half. See how they run at him to try and take away the middle? Excellent game plan by Dale Brown defensively. Uh, he's had a lot of practice in being defended with a big man. Well, you know, since 1989, it's been Shaquille O'Neal, Stanley Roberts, Gert Hammett, all seven-footers. Now he's got to play with a 6'6 guy. So he saw a lot of defenses against him, and now he's trying to utilize what other teams were worried about when they played against LSU. And that 86 team had a 6'6 center by the name of Ricky Blanton that made it to the Final Four. Titus. Again, just another bad decision by Titus. You can really tell that Thompson knows what he has to do defending Titus anytime he brings it inside. A Delta Fawcett halftime report coming up with Big John Saunders. He'll have some record-setting performances. Bobby Knight returning to the sidelines and top 25 scores and highlights. All of that coming up. Rutherford on the run out to Burley. There goes my guy, Burley Curley with the jam. Nobody rotates back. That's a no-no defensively. You gotta communicate with one another and you gotta have good balance on the floor. Caesar open. But quickly double team. Now he finds Brandon. That's a nice idea, but Reeves rejects him. That is four block shots for a big country so far. And he's not really a great shot blocker, but he has so much size. In this game, it's a mismatch inside. Look at a seven-footer goes up. Well, you talk about improvement. I'll never forget watching him for the first time as a freshman. He was like the fifth option on the team. And with great work ethic, he's become one of the solid big players in America. Titus works free on the wing. It won't fall, and Oklahoma State could draw the within three. Doesn't have that kind of range. He wants to dribble and penetrate, Titus. Thompson stripped again, and Brandon has time. He could go end to end. Oh, yes, count it, count it. I believe that counts. Oh, they're waving it off. I thought it was good, Tim. Boy, I agree with you, Dick. I thought he got that and tipped that in before the red light went on. Well, listen to it with natural sound. Listen for the horn as the tip-in goes in. Not the shot by Brandon. Yeah, it came before. It came before the horn. No question about it. If the ruling is cylinder, maybe the officials are correct. We'll clear it up by the time we come back, John. ESPN's exclusive coverage of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. LSU leading Oklahoma State 35 to 30, and uh, Dr. Dick and I always like to clear matters up when they're unclear at the end of a half, and let's show the folks what happened again. Closing seconds, Jamie Brandon going to the glass. Listen for the horn right here on this replay and see if he shoots it first. Clearly, the shot, the tip-in came after the horn, but the, the call was within the cylinder. Well, watch it right here. The ball comes off. Freeze it. Freeze it. Now, look at the ball. The ball is clearly off that cylinder. They get cylinder interference up on the cylinder, and that's what waved off the basket. Sean Gibson's tip-in should have been allowed. It was not, and it was inside the cylinder, not the horn sounding before 
the shot went through. Well, the big story I thought in the first half was the defensive game plan of Dale Brown. Because really, when you looked at it, they get 20 points LSU in the paint versus only 12 for Oklahoma State, despite the presence of Mr. Reeves. You look at the centers going head to head. 6 6 Burns trying to take him away. Gets eight points. Sort of neutralized Reeves. But I thought that game plan of running a guy to double up on Reeves to get him away from spinning to the lane made him take some bad shots. He was 4 for 11 in the first half. Underway in the second half. Brooks Thompson looks to penetrate in dish. I think Reeves is going to have a big half here in the second half. Too strong. Oh, strong right there. I still think he's going to have a big, big second half. Eddie Sutton told me something interesting, Dick, yesterday. He said, you know, you can talk about all the different coaches, Dean Smith, Bob Knight, Dale Brown. We get it done differently, but you know, we do have one common thread, defense. In a variety of ways, you can get it done if you teach sound defensive tactics. Well, you're going to have bad night shooting the basketball. If you play consistent defense, you're always in a position to win a basketball game. See, he wants to spin in the lane. See what I mean, how they run a guy at him? That time it was Sean Gibson coming over with the help, and Gibson gets it out of there quickly to Ronnie Henderson. Again, too quick with it, the freshman from Mississippi. He really has to define what a shot and a good shot is for Henderson as the quick score inside. Fred Burley now. I like Burley. Very active athlete, good offensive rebounder, good low post, has good range. Great attitude. I love teasing him when I call him Curly. He's got a great smile on his face. Fred has 10 points after that field goal. He was player of the year at Oklahoma City in high school before going to Seminole Junior College. Burley got a hand on that one, Richard. It's my guy Curly. It's Curly. Now watch Country right here. Freeze it. Uh, see, right there, number 12, runs right at Country to take away his drive. Sean Gibson takes away his drive to the middle. Number 12 did a great job, Gibson, on Mr. Reeves. LSU loses the inbounds pass. On the other end, Oklahoma State's Collins going up the back and picking up the personal foul with Brandon Titus in front of him. That's the first foul against Terry Collins, junior from Joliet, Illinois, West Joliet High School. Norm Stewart getting a victory. Uh, his team now with Javon Crudup. That will make a difference. Iowa gets beat by Iowa State. Johnny Orr with a big win. Big Country's got some blood on that elbow and will be forced to sit for a brief moment. Eddie Sutton's searching for a guy to play that third, that number three position, hoping that it would be Terry Collins. He was a state hurdling champ, and he really right now has been struggling a little bit. He's got great speed. Only played about 13 minutes a game. They thought that Collins would be the answer, as you said, from out of Joliet, Illinois. They're rotating several people there, trying to find somebody to give them solid play on that wing. On the next dead ball, Brian Reeves will get back in because of the NCAA blood rule. He has to sit. Brandon, not there. A little bit outside of his range. He's more a driver and a slasher, Jamie Brandon. For some strange reason, the shot clock goes off. <laughs> A break for Bryant Reeves to get back in because obviously the shot, the shot clock did not reset. I'll never forget as there's Eddie Sutton talking to the <laughs> officials. Eddie with a smile on his face. Hey, it's early in the season, guys. And you're playing at a quasi-neutral site. That'll happen from time to time. Eddie and Dale's had interesting matchups when they were in the SEC. Kentucky and LSU. Nothing better than 1986 when LSU loses three times to a great Kentucky team and then finally beats them in Atlanta to go to the Final Four. And that's when never nervous Purvis Ellison and Louisville cut the nets down in 1986. Rutherford feeds Bailey. Oh, that's a nice move to Burley. Burley really operates well on that baseline. Very athletic. 35-34, LSU led by five at the intermission. Oklahoma State looks a little quicker in this half, really pushing the ball up the floor. Well, Burley is six for 10 from the floor. He has certainly made good use of Reeves being double teamed. Brandon, foul. Tom Eade spots it inside. Collins in position to pick it up, his second. Dale Brown, what a run at LSU. 
four SEC championships, twice to the Final Four, 1981, 1986. Had that team that everybody thought would be an automatic when he had Stanley Roberts and Chris Jackson and he had Shaquille O'Neal. There's a look at some of his achievements, five consecutive 20-win seasons. And really, he's looking forward to North Carolina coming into the Superdome. He told me today, he said, we hope to get 70,000 fans. Tonight's game not indicative of the type of crowds that you would normally see LSU have when coming to New Orleans. The state high school championships are being played at the Superdome. This was a game put together relatively late. Garth Brooks is performing at the Assembly Center in Baton Rouge for three consecutive nights. And when this game was put together by our programming people, Tom O'Jackson and company, they did not know that Garth Brooks had already uh, gotten those dates in the Assembly Center, so they moved it down here. He generally loves to promote one game in the city of New Orleans each year. Hey, tell me, That's Garth Brooks, game. does he shoot a jump shot? Who is he, a jump shooter? <laughs> I never heard of him. I'm looking at all my notes here. Garth Brooks. Where is he? I went to see him in concert down at the Forum in L.A. Uh, he and David Copperfield are a former great backcourt. <laughs> oh, wanted to walk right there. See, now look how they run right at him. Oh, nice. Giving it right back. you got to make the open shot. You know what? That was created by the double up on Reeves. He rotates it out inside, outside, and they get the trifecta out of Rutherford. Rutherford has seven. This is the second lead of the game for Oklahoma State. That last play really shows you what they designed in their offensive sets. Oklahoma State on double team on Reeves. So they want to try. They want to go to the basket. And there's Rutherford with a steal. And Caesar, upon returning the favor, will pick up the foul. We're going to watch Country now get the ball inside. And he's going to draw traffic. Hold it right there. Freeze it. See right now? He doubles, doubles up on him inside. Now watch them kick the ball back outside. Look at him spotting up Rutherford wide open on top of the circle. And he knocks down the trifecta. LSU has been outscored 7-1 to one here in the opening moments of the second half. When they start hitting that open jump shot. It's going to open things up for this guy. And he gets the roll. Nice little jump shooter. I was watching him knock down three-point shots today at practice. He's got such great hands. That's great attitude, too. Just a tremendous attitude. Played on the USA Select team with Eric Montross and Jason Kidd, coached by DJ Carlissimo. Brandon. Clear out. They clear out, empty out of side. We talked about a clear out. They simply empty out of side of the floor, and they isolate Brandon for his slashing, driving ability. Give it inside to Reeves. There it is. Good. See, that's, that's the move he wants, though. Turn to the baseline to get away from the double team in the middle of the floor. Lanier Burns clears it. Sean Gibson, what a pass to Caesar. Sean Gibson with a Sunday best dish. He really is an excellent passer. I mean, he lays a dish like they laid down an umbro. My God, what a, you talk about a chef. <laughs> LSU retains the lead at one, 40 to 39. And traveling against Burley. They played four and a half. Oklahoma State with a 9-1 run, but it's answered by LSU. Magic Moments presented by the new Dodge. At the tender age of 21, a man-child known simply as Shaq is already an NBA legend. His story began at Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when a 7-foot-1, 300-pound freshman became starting center at LSU. The college game wasn't ready for Shaquille O'Neal's sheer size, strength, and agility. His thunderous tip slam against McNeese State is remembered as one of college basketball's magic moments. Tim, we're going to watch LSU run a really excellent diagonal cut. Right here, Caesar is going to slash to the box and a breakdown defensively by Rutherford, who doesn't see him. There's the ball now, and there's the excellent pass by Gibson. Freezer right there. So he catches the ball here. He's up for a layup. But this right here, Rutherford did not communicate and didn't give help to Burley.
should have beaten Caesar to that slot in defensive transition, but an excellent job by LSU to find the open man, and Gibson made that pass. Without Andre Owen, Sean Gibson may be the real key for this LSU team. They need him on the floor on both ends, don't well, they? Well, he passes the ball really well. Southern Cal would have went over Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, George Ravlin. Hey, Nickel State beat Auburn at Auburn and pushed LSU to overtime the other night. They've got a nice team. they got a pretty good basketball team. They really do. I didn't know they beat Auburn. Yeah, at Auburn. They're going to OT with LSU in Baton Rouge. Shot clock under 15. Titus off the pass from Caesar draws the foul, cutting to the basket. What they're trying to do right now, LSU, is spreading the court. And they're trying to utilize quickness and quick diagonal cuts to the basket for open layups. They're trying to spread against the man-to-man -man defense. Scott Sutton coming back into the game. Boy, you know his turnover to assist ratio is 8 to 1 coming into tonight's game. 32 assists to, to 4 turnovers. That's really having an understanding of the game. And you can wonder why having a brother that played. They won 52 games with Sean Sutton in two years at the point guard slot. And playing for his dad, who was a master, who beat the great Will Chamberlain's team when he played. Chamberlain was, they were number one in the nation at Kansas, and Oklahoma State beat him. And Eddie Sutton was ready for this. Nine for 12. Mm -hmm. He had 18 points. It would have been 27, he told me, if the three-point line was in effect. LSU's lead is two, as Brandon Titus got one of the two free throws. Burns really doing a good job playing behind. They are well aware of Reeves. Plays behind him, and then they're going to run at him. Gibson comes over to help, but a little too late with Big Country up high. Do you notice how he's spinning to the baseline now, and he's open, rather than spinning to the middle of the floor? Because the game plan, the architect, Dale Brown's game plan, was to take away his ability to spin to the three-second area. He knows where the help's coming from now. Exactly. <laughs> Women's college basketball coming your way on ESPN. University of Connecticut, outstanding team, and Virginia, of course, they've been to their fair share of Final Fours as well. That's Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, today I met Cornelia Gaydon. If you don't know the name, she's a superstar in the SEC, plays for LSU. She said she wants to play in this game. They tell me she can really shoot the rock. Brandon Titus picked up that foul this second. Boy, you could make a great case that women's college basketball is at its best in the Southeastern Conference with the powerhouse teams that they've had there. That's some outstanding coaches in that league as well. See, there's the double up to the middle, and he's going to the baseline. Hey, Tim, did I tell you he's going to have a big second half? Because he really learned and made an adjustment here, and the adjustment is I will not spin to the middle. I will spin to the baseline. Watch him sitting down on a post. Now watch him spin to the baseline. Freeze it. See, right here, he spins to the baseline to take away the help that comes from this side of the floor. Great spin to the base, and there's the little jump hook. He can play for me any day just because of his attitude, work ethic, and he will not hurt you in any shape or form. He's a perfect team player. Byron Houston gave him the nickname, and of course now Byron is playing at the next level. Plays with Golden State. They have a great team of Corey Williams, who's worked the Bulls, is now in the CBA. They're in Alexander, right out of here in New Orleans, now playing in Sweden. Brandon Titus, only his second field goal of the night. I'm really surprised by Eddie Sutton's defense allowing that kind of dribble penetration. His clubs usually do such a better job of stopping the basketball. Nice dish. Sutton to Reeves, rejected by the long arms from Iowa, Louisiana. Clarence Caesar getting in the way. Caesar second in the league in the SEC in steals two years ago. Now here comes the help. Here comes Caesar. Now see right there with three guys around him, Reeves has to learn to be aware of where his teammates are on the floor to try and recognize the open man. And there he is again, Caesar again, slapping it away. Control to Gibson. Caesar's very quick to the basketball. Spin move on the other end. Andre Patillo spots an offensive foul against Brandon. His third. Caesar a little bit out of control right there. There's the charge on Caesar. It was Caesar, Tim. Jamie Brandon picked up that foul on the follow. His third. Oh, they get on Brandon? Yeah. He could have had it earlier on the charge on yeah. Caesar. They had two choices. 
I'm excused for that because I'm blind on my left eye. That's to my left. So you got to give me a turnover right now. I'll give you... You're always good with help side defense. <laughs> I'll give it to him. Now give it to him. Spin to the baseline. There it is. Now they'll call in the cylinder again and wave it off against okay. Keontae Roberts. Keontae Roberts we haven't heard much from tonight, and he is a celebrated freshman from Oklahoma Christian High in Edmond, Oklahoma, a relatively small high school in that state. They really feel he's going to be a heck of a player. They thought they'd get great play out of Scott Pierce, a transfer from out of Illinois at 6'8". He has not become the kind of consistent player that they thought he would be. Caesar on the blocks. That's good shot selection right there by Clarence Caesar. Lost his starting job because Dale Brown was upset with his decision making. Not a big crowd, but a live crowd. Yeah, well, you're in Louisiana. They'll make some noise here. Another steal for the Tigers. 15 turnovers committed by Oklahoma State. And Thompson picks up the foul. Thompson thought he had all ball. He got the technical, and Eddie Sutton can't believe it. Went in to waste any time, dealing him with a 10. See, he picked up the ball, slammed it to the floor briefly, and officials now have made that a point of emphasis. They do not want to be shown up at all. And in defense of Brooks, I really don't think he deserved this technical. All right, here he comes with a strip from the backside. He's really frustrated with himself. He didn't throw it, though, Dick. I mean, he actually stopped it as he was slamming it to the floor. I, I agree with Eddie. I think the whistle for the team came very quick. Too quick. I thought it was too quick as well. I was kind of surprised. Jamie Brandon at the line. Brooks Good. Thompson, as we mentioned, a transfer from Texas A&M. Uh, prolific scorer, and he's having to play really out of position at the point. We're really watching two teams that are playing without pure point guards. Yeah, he's not a pure point guard, but he really has some good understanding of the game, and he makes some good decisions with the basketball, and you want him to shoot the ball. They've really done a great job in the second half here, not allowing Thompson to get a good look at the basket, because he can really stroke the J. Sutton will take a seat, and coming back into the game, Terry Collins. There's the double team. In the corner, now Titus gets free in the lane. Burns follows. Burns again. Got live legs, good jumpers on the inside. Quickness. 46-43, LSU by three. They got to find some shots for Thompson. They got to find some shots for Thompson. He can really shoot the ball, this guy here. Good look to Burley, though. Reeves follows with the left hand. Reeves having a big second half after four for 11 in the first half. 16 for Big Country. He had eight in the entire first half. Burns comes out high. See, Reeves has got to rotate out and check him. In their last game against Texas Christian University, Kurt Thomas got 30, stepped away from the goal. A good-looking shooter as well as a good forward at about 6'9". Plays for Mo Iva down at TCU. And he wants him to rotate out quicker, the big fella. It's tough when you're 7 feet to check those 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, foot guys. Rutherford for three. Key player, Randy Rutherford. He's got a nice touch, good rotation. He's had some bad games this year in terms of scoring. He's a pretty good scorer. Played at Bacon Junior College. Just outside, or actually in the Muskogee area of Oklahoma. They form a nice backcourt, Rutherford and also a county. Burns again out high. See, Reeves is not coming out to check him. And then he'll burn. I'm going to knock it down. That's a three-pointer for Burns. He has 13, and the Tigers lead back to three. Now the help from Caesar, and a steal. And it's Hale Caesar in New Orleans for LSU defensively. That's why he was second in the SEC two years ago, third last year in steals. He likes to gamble. Sometimes you get burned gambling like that too, Tim. Brandon feeds Burns again. Barely drew iron, but Reeves did come out. See, Reeves is going to really be tested with that all year long. People are going to try to take him away from the man-to-man, -man, bring him away from the basket. Brooks Thompson. A little too strong, but Titus gave him a lot of room. Caesar gambles, and this time gets caught. 
Reeves told me today the difference last year and this year expectation last year he was able to sneak up on people and surprise people this year everybody is keyed up for the kid from Gans Oklahoma and even in defeat against Kentucky you could tell Rozier was going to be a major factor this year and defense against Thompson has been big for LSU well Titus really shadowing him all over the court he's not going to give any help look up at 25 he says Thompson you're not going to get a look at the trifecta I'm going to guard you so close I'm not going to let you get a look at that basket Brooks Thompson who had 10 at halftime shut out so far in the second half but Bryant Reeves has had a few more looks here in half number two hence our game this close at 51-48. You get the indication this one's going to go right down to the wire. Well, you know, when you look at this basketball team, blowing out Texas impressed me because Tom Penders has got some good athletes. Albert Dent, we talk Terrence Wrencher. Texas has got a team capable of beating a lot of people. And they blew them away by 20. That impressed me. This is another game that LSU could look at as an ratings index game, an RPI game for the NCAA tournament. Out of bounds. It will go to... Oklahoma State. That's a good point you made, Tim. I'll tell you why. Anytime you play out of your conference against another team that's nationally rated and you play in your state like Dale Brown is doing, you want to get a win because this win could be big later on in terms of getting into the tournament, especially if you're going to be a team that will be a little bit up and down, and I think that's what LSU is going to be this year. Particularly given the fact that uh, the argument last year was his schedule was soft and he had to beat Vanderbilt in the SEC tournament in the semifinal round to really garner that NCAA bid. He's got UCLA and North Carolina this year to play and Louisville. Rutherford with two on the shot. Boy, what a nice play again by Oklahoma State. It's hard for me to believe that Randy Rutherford struggled for two or three points in a game. He's got too good a look at the basket. He's got great range. He's also very quick defensively. Three for three from three-point range here in this half. Nice combination. Rutherford and Thompson both threats to shoot that jump shot. Gibson works three on the wing. Hands it. Gibson, one of those stabilizers. The guy that makes the pass, hits the open shot. He's got that Winston-Salem, North Carolina background in him, and uh, that makes a difference. He's basketball smart on the floor. Reads well, defensively as well as offensively. Over Thompson. Oh, that's just a great play by Brooks Thompson with Sean Gibson in his face. Tied at 53. Nice little baseline. Jay's got that feather touch. Let him get over the top of the screen. We've had seven ties in this game. Trying to win that motion game. Good look to Titus. Pass Thompson. Titus with that quick move along the baseline. Good play without a point guard. What they have a bunch of athletes, quick slashers and drivers. Sean Gibson making those nice passes out on the perimeter. He really is an excellent perimeter passer. Caesar has four steals in the game. This may be your point guard right here, Dick, without Andre Owens. Caesar from the wing. That one blocked, deflected, out of bounds to Oklahoma State. Think about the Big 8, Kansas, Oklahoma State. Looks this year that there's not going to be a dominant team, but some really good teams up on top. 55-53 LSU by two with under eight minutes left, and college basketball continues on ESPN. Our coverage with the Big East meeting the Southwest Conference. Daniel Marshall, what a baseliner he is in the Big East, and the Texas Longhorns, though losing to LSU, came back with a tough victory against Nebraska. Tommy Penders picked to win the Southwest Conference Wednesday night, 7:30 Eastern Time on ESPN. Connecticut's really been impressive. They played outstanding basketball, blown away Virginia, beating Seton Hall easily. Danielle Marshall, without a doubt, is one of the top 15 players in America. Backcourt violation. Smart move by Thompson to make absolutely certain Gibson didn't get it. The Big 8 Conference, you commented on the strength of it. The problem is, even though they've had great regular seasons, they've had poor postseason. Well, other than Kansas, Kansas has done really well since the 90s. And the 90s, rather, Oklahoma State's been a little better than 500, but everybody else has come up short. They have to start to make some noise because, unfortunately, right now, it seems that everything you do in a postseason is what it's all about. Just ask Arizona. They have a great, great year, and everybody says, what happened? You lose to Santa Clara. I don't like that. I like the season to be a little bit more important than the way it's looked upon. 
I'm just getting the mentality of the NBA. Mm -hmm. Under 10 on the shot clock. Brandon has to get rid of it with two on the shot in the paint. Wow. And he's the man you want to have it in that situation. He really utilizes his legs well. Watch his bounce off the floor. He gets his power on that jump shot right from his legs. He is so comfortable playing that wing. Hutchie trying to sit inside and lead it from behind on him. Burns is. Oh, here comes. Oh, nice pass. Right into the hands of Chianti Roberts. And he gets his first points of the game. I love that name, Chianti. Yeah. Chianti with the deuce. 57 55, LSU by two. Excellent pass by Reeves, who has the great pause. Tremendous hand. Caesar. Oh, oh Roberts man. got over him completely. Hey, what and yes, and it counts. What Jamie run. Brandon, take it home. Jamie, just like on the streets in a windy city. Did you see I mean, Chianti yeah. Roberts, though, go well over? Look what? at this play. Watch Chianti. There's the fake. He leaves some on the floor. He's a hurdler. And there's the little play now by Brandon. Look at Brandon. Up, up, and away. Right in your face, he says. How's that, country? He said, you didn't see that in Gans, Oklahoma, baby. <laughs> he said, we do that in the Windy City in Chinatown. He was really scheduled to go to Illinois. Yeah. And then Illinois, for some reason, academically had a problem. Couldn't get him in. And a phone call was made to give him an opportunity by Lou Henson to Dale Brown. And they were lucky enough to get him down at LSU. And he's been a solid player. He's doing a good job in the classroom as well. Caesar picks up his third foul, and not a good idea, given what he means to this team defensively with 6-11 remaining. But sometimes a, an athletic play is overshadowed. That time, Pianti Roberts did all he could to keep from fouling Caesar, and then Brandon really finished. Rutherford on the run. Oh, what a play by Randy Rutherford. He's really an underrated player, tough defensively as well. Usually plays against the best offensive player on the perimeter. Now he's matched up. They got Rutherford going head to head with Gibson to try and shut off his passing ability. Brandon really wants it, doesn't he? Got right past Collins, but couldn't finish. He's such a strong drive for Brandon. Very physical as he takes the ball to the basket. Look at Reeves. I'm going to play up on top. And I'm going to slide inside. Somebody better check Rutherford. He feels it. Yeah, he really feels it. He hits the tray. And now that part poses a dilemma for Dale Brown. Not only must he concentrate on Brooks Thompson, but Randy Rutherford along the perimeter. And that opens up the inside for Reeves because if you come out and play those two, it's wide open to get him the basketball. Titus can't get it to fall. Cleared to Caesar for three. He's not bashful. I'll tell you what, he looks at the goal when he touches the rock. Can we... He gets his hands on the rock, Caesar. You know where that baby's going. Under five to play. Brooks Thompson will wait for the big fellow to lumber down court. See, big country now is sitting in deep, and because they're coming out to play Rutherford and Thompson, he should be wide open. He should be able to get the ball in deep. See, right now they got to recognize because of the presence, they're extending defensively on Thompson, and they're extending out on Rutherford. Thompson. Reeves follows. Cleared by Caesar, stolen by Thompson. See, right now, though, they got to take control and utilize this half court offensive set intelligently. There's a steal by Caesar, and Thompson wanted a timeout. I think it's intentional. I think that should have been an intentional foul. I think that should have been an intentional two shots in the basketball. Eddie Sutton wanted a timeout just prior to Caesar's steal. He could see that Clarence Caesar was going to steal that one and take his offense out of it. Look, the timeout at the right-hand portion of your screen. Yeah, they lobbed the pass, though. They floated laterally. Caesar, now watch this now. To stop the layup, I really believe that's intentional. I think that's an intentional play. Not unsportsmanlike. He's trying to be, well, I guess he goes for the ball is their claim. You know, what happens with that particular call, Dick, is that you rarely see it made until we're under a minute to play. Most of the time, you'll get the intentional in a similar situation if it's late in the late. game. Six steals in the game for Clarence Caesar, and he's come off the bench with 11. He has responded to his benches. Well, he anticipates well. He's had another steal, but he'll get him for the fourth foul. Overextending 
Not a smart play at all by Clarence Caesar. Well, he's picked up two fouls now, Dick. One going over the back on a missed free throw, and now that one. He's too experienced as a player, Tim, and he's too important to the basketball team. He's 70 feet from the goal. Johnny Jones talking to him right now, who played for Dale Brown. Silly foul right here. Look at the denial up in the corner. I mean, the referee's right there, no doubt about it. And that will put Burley at the line. That's four on Clarence Caesar. He has decided to leave him on the floor. For his winning time, let's let him go down the stretch. He needs size. See, they're without size, LSU. He gets the rebound. <laughs> Incidental contact there as Caesar got caught in the chops from Berlin. You know, you look in the last few minutes of this game, Dick, and Sean Gibson, number 12 in white for LSU, really should touch the ball a little more, don't you think? I mean, well, he's a guy that brings some consistency and makes those passes inside. He's an excellent passer. He really knows where people are on the floor. Lanier Burns comes out high again. Their ball, but there is Gibson. And they're going to say it's out of bounds off Sean. And Dale Brown's a little angry. He thought... Did you, notice, did you notice how Reeves challenged him on that yeah. shot after his burn by two jumpers by Burns? 3.57 remaining. And that uh, only loss coming to the Atlanta Hawks who are on a streak as well. You know, you look at Dale Brown here. And he loves the underdog role and he's firmly planted there. He keeps this trophy on his desk in his office. Well, he went around the world. He got that in Tel Aviv. He brought it to practice today, and he gave them a lesson. He said, this is David, and that's us. They're Goliath. And he said, we're coming after him. Master, he had a meeting one-on-one -on -one in Calcutta with Mother Teresa. Hey, and his son, six weeks ago, was invited by the president, spent the night at the White House. I'm waiting for the president to call me, <laughs> Timmy B. Reeves, not there, and there's the help from Burns. And it'll be a push. Gerald Boudreaux spots Burley with the push. That's three fouls on Fred Burley, the senior from Oklahoma City and Douglas High. Certainly this is not a typical LSU team in terms of the great size, but it's a team with a lot of guts and heart, and they're really a very, very quick team. And Dale Brown, look, look, he gets a five out there. I mean, you talk about a guy that's optimistic. He said we have to go to quickness, so he changed the whole look offensively, and he's gone to an now a motion game. Clarence Caesar. He said, I'm going to be on the floor at winning time, Coach. He said, it's not important that I don't start. Coach is sending me a message, a message about shot selection, but I want to be on the floor when the game is on the line. Well, it's on the line now. Up two, and he puts him up three. 12 points, and he's three for three from the line. Now the pressure, and Rutherford runs free. Gibson with a steal and a nice play by Caesar, making certain not to pick up a foul. And now you want to spread the court. You want to use some of the 35 seconds, and you want to get a good shot with each possession. You like Brandon to be at a finish. Uh, he was on the end line. You see, that's a no-no. Again, you're an experienced player. you got to know where you are on the floor. You can't give up the basketball in key times. You put the score down now. 322, they have the basketball up three, and they lose it. See what happens from this moment on. I think that's a big possession. Oklahoma State's half-court game only affected when, uh, when the big fella gets the entry pass. They went to a double stop and popped out off it, trying to get the ball inside the reeds. Burley. Kins one for three. That's a big basket for Fred Burley. And as you mentioned, that turnover by Caesar could loom large. I'll tell you, Burley, a big-time player, has been very effective inside, and he steps outside. Gibson gets the touch, and he's out of bounds. That's two possessions in a row that you don't get a shot, Tim. It's tough to win basketball games in that kind of situation. Dale Brown gets the timeout. You got to remember where you are on the floor. That's what he'll talk about during this timeout. We're tied at 63 with 2.43 remaining. We're tied at 63 with 2 minutes and 43 seconds remaining. And Dale Brown urging his guys to...
space on the floor offensively and then get those drives to the basket. That's where they've been most effective offensively. Yeah, you got to get spread out the court, get good spacing. On the other side right now with the basketball in a tie game after the two no-nos and the two poor possessions by LSU, right now as we look at the reset right here, Timmy, timeouts left, LSU with two, Oklahoma State with three, possession arrow goes to LSU, team fouls at 8 Oklahoma State, 7 LSU. Right now, you're an All-American. You're a Brian Reeves. You're 7 feet. They got a 6-7 on you. You have to make the play, whether it be a score or whether it be a pass off you. But you've got to somehow make the play late in the game. That's what All-Americans do. They find a way to respond. Amir Burns right there with him defensively on the blocks. It's got to happen off him in that post. You've got to bring the ball and go with your best option. They're using the clock, trying to get the good shot. Reeves got to become a little bit more active and want the ball down in the box. He got it. And that's a push against Burley. His fourth. Sean Gibson in position yet again, but you have to credit Lanier Burns' defensive play against Reeves, making him work as hard as he did, and particularly that time, Dick, because the help wasn't coming. Well, you know, you credit Lanier Burns, but I credit Dale Brown as well. Dale Brown with his game plan and giving some help to Burns. But here's Burns working hard inside. See, he forced him to that baseline, and he really made himself take, he made him take a bad shot. That was really a very tough shot. Sean Gibson at the stretch. He's quietly done it tonight. Statistically, it doesn't look really impressive, but he's made some excellent passes, Sean Gibson. And he's more than just a, you see at the free throw line, he's been excellent this year. This is a player that all that he does will not show up in the box score. He's really locked up here in the second half. He's been right in the face of Thompson. 65-63, Tigers by two, just over two to play, and as we mentioned about 10 minutes ago, this one's gonna go right down to the wire. Sutton called for a hoop and a timeout, and his son takes the shot. He doesn't get the hoop, and Jamie Brandon's on the loose. Two on one to Caesar. I tell you, he makes it difficult. He's always looking to make the spectacular play. Timeout. Oklahoma State and the Tiger faithful rise to their feet. We're going to watch Jamie Brandon right now take the ball at Brooks Thompson, number four. There he is right now. Freeze it. See, right here. He brings the ball here, and here's the guy that's going to get the basketball. We're going to watch right now Clarence Caesar with the ball. And now he's going to make a spin on Thompson. He spins. He whirls. He lays it on the glass. I mean, that was like Fowler going to Myers in Sports Center. <laughs> and they'll be coming up with Sports Center with the latest on the Rockets and their historical ride under Rudy Tomjanovich. The 49ers and Falcons played today. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons making it a little easier for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of the playoffs and home field advantage perhaps down the road. All of that coming up on Sports Center immediately after our game. It's Titus right up in the face of Thompson. Rutherford. Big three off the curl move by Rutherford. Nice little cut by Rutherford to get free up on top of the circle. Now you get down to winning time. Shot selection so important. And Dale Brown predictably spreading the floor. Going to a 3-2 set, putting the ball in the hands of Brandon. Remember now, you can keep the ball in his hands because the five-second count is not in effect. Shot clock is down to eight. Burns with the entry. Not the shot you want, not out of Titus. Got it. Oh, he makes it count! He got the pick from Burns that he needed to nail it. And he's not the guy you really want to shoot it. And in that case, there's the curl again by Rutherford. Followed by Burley, and he draws the foul. Got to give Titus credit, making that big shot under pressure. Brandon Titus almost transferred. When they recruited Randy Livingston, he was thinking of transferring from out of Salinas, California. And Brandon Titus will leave the game with five fouls. But he hit the big basket before he picked up the vital fifth. Well, certainly not their number one option. At 23-0 against Nichols State, where they needed that big win. There he is. 
Now watch this. The clock's winding down, and he's going to let it fly. See, Reeves didn't step right at him. He retreated rather than rotate out and take away his look at the goal. That foul was against Caesar, his fifth, rather than Titus. And he's a little happier, though, because his defense came in handy in the second half. That aggressive style of his paid dividends. Well, he had six steals. He anticipated really well and made that spectacular spinning move on a pass from Brandon. Don't count out Eddie Sutton, folks. He knows what he's doing on the most. Oklahoma State down three, but they'll be at the line, and still they're very much alive. And here's Brandon Titus. He got a high pick, Dick, that I think really helped him get this shot off. There it is. There's the pick by Lanier Burns, but she's stepping out with Brian Reeves, but then he drifts away rather than step right at him. And Titus knocks it down. Big shot. Lanier Burns has done a solid job, giving away so much size inside the Reeves. As my guy Curly going to the free throw line. Curly Burley. 72% on the year at the stripe as you look at Burns. And remember, you got to block out against a guy like Reeves because the follow up on this free throw could be vital here. Two shots for Burley. This place is loud, really loud. It's got a nice rotation. Eddie Sutton's team. They've only had three free throws. The coaches don't like to see the score sheet on the road when, when that happened. Shot clock is off because 35 seconds remain. So now Oklahoma State must figure whom to foul after playing good defense. Eddie Ars spreading the court, posting the guy to the middle of the floor, go to a 3 2 set, and the double up. Henderson doesn't need to pass, but he turned it over. He took steps. Freshman mistake. He's really trying to adjust to this college game, and it hasn't been easy for him here today. Got his first start, Ronnie Henderson. Dale Brown is claiming that Henderson may have been pushed, and that helped force that turnover. They didn't have really good spacing right there. It's easy to give help when you have two people close by and together. And right now, you go down to Oklahoma State, they have to really come up with a game to get the ball inside, a game plan. And right now, Dale Brown's going to try to defend that. Here's the travel. Reeves steps out. He tripped over Bryant Reeves, and that's what forced the travel. Look at Dale Brown on that sideline, knows it's big. One point game, loses the basketball, 20 ticks on the clock. Uh, you say a freshman mistake, it really wasn't. He tripped over Reeves, it was just an unfortunate occurrence for the freshman. And a freshman mistake would have been to take it to the hole and put it up when you need to do that. Taking a bad shot. Ronnie Henderson's going to be a star player, not yeah, just an will. average player. He has star ability. It's a matter of just getting himself into the flow and getting some confidence. Sports Center coming up next with that combination of Fowler and Myers. But right now, the combination could be Thompson inside to Reeves and maybe back outside to either Thompson or Rutherford. So obviously, Dale Brown's decision defensively who to put pressure on along the perimeter becomes vitally important because there are more than just a couple of options for Eddie Sutton offensively. I'll tell you what could be big right now, really the silly fouls by Clarence Caesar. They really miss him at this time defensively. He had six steals and he gives him size. Timeout Oklahoma State. Good move by Dale Brown going to full court pressure, Tim, trying to make them take some time off the clock and bring the ball up the floor. No timeouts remaining now for Sutton as his defensive pressure forced him to utilize that final timeout. I think there are two things to look at. Number one, we saw full court pressure by LSU. Solid, good coaching maneuver because it will force Oklahoma State to use some time and maybe hurry to take a bad shot. On the second end of it, I thought it was a good decision right there to get that timeout rather than panic with that inbounds pass. Always a positive thinker. Now facing an offensive force that has Thompson along the perimeter. Also has Rutherford who can shoot it for three. And of course the big fella with the crew cut from Gans, Oklahoma. Now obviously your options are limited a bit thick when you have the 20 seconds with which to work. 
You may not be able to make that entry pass if it's taken away to reach. Especially against quickness and good athletes, and you have to come 94 feet up the floor. I'd love the NBA rule to be adopted in college where you have the choice to take it out midcourt or the baseline. It gives the coaches more options and makes more decision making. Brandon Titus' defense against Thompson on the ball, worth watching, and Reeves against Burns. They get it up in five seconds. They're going to sit down and go to the All-American. There's the help, and he tied it up, and the arrow to LSU. The help side defense comes up big for Dale Brown. That's been his game plan all night long. Rotate inside, take away the drive to the middle of the floor. There goes inside. They go to the All-American. And there comes that help to try and take away the move. We've been talking about it all night, trying to spin to the middle of the floor. And it's Sean Gibson, Dick. And what a play not to commit the foul. Gibson I mean, does a great job taking away the angle, not allowing Brian Reeves to spin to the middle of the floor. Brian should have been aware of big country and should have went to the baseline side. Credit that to Dale Brown. Excellent coaching game plan. He told us about it today. That was going to be his strategy, to sprint somebody in the middle and attack Reeves and stop him from going. You know, this puts to rest some of the nonsense of people about can Dale Brown coach. I mean, he looked at Phil, he evaluated, he analyzed Reeves' game, and he came up with that theory. You know, you're almost guaranteed a great game when Eddie Sutton is on one sidelines and Dale Brown is on the other. If LSU wins this game, Sutton and Brown would be 8-8 eight and eight head to head. And of course, Coach Sutton at Arkansas, Kentucky, and now Oklahoma State during those matchups. And this has been one of those nice December matchups as we reset it for you. No timeouts left for either team. Both teams well into the bonus. And the possession arrow now to Oklahoma State, and that arrow loomed big for LSU moments ago. Well, obviously, they got to come up here, try and make the steal. If they don't get it, they got to foul immediately. they got to foul immediately. Can't allow them to use their clock. Rutherford picks it up late, and that'll put Brandon to the line. Jamie Brandon will get two. Eddie Sutton, you talk about a tactician. Four schools, Creighton, Arkansas, Kentucky, Oklahoma State, all have been part of the big dance. All have had outstanding clubs. 78 to the final four with that great team at Arkansas with the triplets. Talking about Arkansas right now, Arkansas to me, 1 to 12, is the best team in the United States with Carolina right there behind them. Brandon gets two because that was the 10th team foul against Oklahoma State. Sports Center coming up next, but Brandon will try to put an exclamation point on this one and force OSU to the three-pointer at desperation time to send it to overtime. Well, remember, the clock doesn't start until the ball touches a player on the floor. Rutherford and Thompson have three-point range. I look for full-court pressure out of LSU, not allowing them to get the ball up quickly. Hey, 21 for Brandon. Here comes the pressure. Won't allow him to make that long pass. Clock doesn't start until it touches someone on the floor. A good move by Reeves. And a steal by Henderson. It's all over. But that was a good move by Reeves. I'll tell you, they earned this W, baby. They flat out earned it. They hustled, they scrapped, and they won this game with tremendous desire. Goliath and David. David comes out with the W. Another Dale Brown coaching Camelot. He beats number 15, Oklahoma State. Here on the lakefront in New 